On Thanksgiving Day, November 22, 2012, 18-year-old Haley Kiefer and her 17-year-old cousin Nicholas Brady broke into the home of Byron David Smith. Smith was a 64-year-old retired technical security engineer officer and war veteran living in Little Falls, Minnesota. He was armed with a Ruger Mini-14 pistol and was planning on shooting the intruders as they walked in through the basement entryway of his home. Prior to being murdered, Haley Kiefer was a high school senior who was active in athletics at Little Falls High School. Nick Brady was a high school junior who wrestled at Little Falls High School before transferring to nearby Pillager High School in Pillager, Minnesota. Nick Brady had prior interactions with Byron Smith as he was previously hired to do yard work for Smith's home. Smith had been burglarized at least half a dozen times over the past few months prior to the Thanksgiving Day break-in. Among the items stolen were thousands of dollars in cash, a sentimental watch his father had received after spending nearly a year as a prisoner of war in World War II, various medals, badges, and ribbons that Smith earned in the Air Force during his time in the Vietnam War. It was around this time that Smith began routinely wearing a holster with a loaded gun inside his home for added security measures. On the morning of the break-in, video surveillance footage shows Byron Smith leaving his home in his gray pickup truck at approximately 11.25 a.m. Nick Brady can be seen casing Smith's property moments before the Thanksgiving Day break-in at around 12.35 p.m. Around 20 minutes elapsed when Kiefer is then seen on video going to check on Brady at around 12.50 p.m. Smith claims he allegedly moved his truck to a neighbor's driveway after, quote, seeing a neighbor girl he thought was responsible for the break-ins drive by his neighborhood. Prosecutors at his trial argued it was more than likely an attempt by Smith to make his house look abandoned in order to lure the teens into his home. In addition to his home security surveillance footage, Smith also recorded at least six hours of audio on a digital recorder in the basement of his residence. He activated the audio recorder, loaded his guns, and settled into his basement reading chair with water, snacks, and a novel. Smith can be heard talking to himself on tape, saying, In your left eye, In your left eye. And I realize I don't have an appointment, but I would like to see one of the lawyers here. I realize I don't have an appointment, but I would like to see one of the lawyers here. These statements by Smith show clear premeditation and rehearsal of his subsequent actions following the shootings. The prosecution noted that Kiefer was later shot in the left eye just like Smith planned out on tape. The other statement on the recorder was a practice run of what Smith would say to the authorities, indicating that Smith was aware he would require legal counsel after executing his plan. Smith's recorded statements to police described delivering killing shots to both of the victims' head. He claims he shot both Brady and Kiefer at separate times at the top of the basement stairs. Smith claimed that Kiefer let out a short laugh after she fell down the stairs, taunting Smith's difficulty with his jammed rifle. In his recorded police interviews, Smith says, if you're trying to shoot somebody and they laugh at you, you go again. Smith also acknowledges firing more shots than he needed to and that he fired, quote, a good, clean finishing shot into Kiefer's cranium from underneath her chin. Smith failed to immediately report the deaths to the police. Smith waited until the next day to notify authorities, claiming he didn't want to bother law enforcement on Thanksgiving Day. Evidence recovered from the crime scene revealed the car driven by Brady was also linked to a residence break-in of a retired school teacher the night before the break-in at Smith's. Brady's own sister also claimed that Nick Brady had previously stolen prescription drugs from her home on August 28, 2012. Smith said he ended up hiding in the basement throughout the night and into the next morning before making a call to a trusted neighbor. He feared, quote, the neighbor girl's father would come looking for her. Smith says, the first couple of hours I was just shaking and I gradually shifted into worrying. I was pretty much afraid to do anything. He also came to the realization that the incident was over and the intruders were dead. In his mind, nothing was going to change by postponing the involvement of law enforcement. Smith says, I saw it as a static situation. He claims he didn't want to ruin Thanksgiving for others by calling authorities that day. Smith later volunteered to give his audio recordings, fingerprints, DNA samples, and an explanation to authorities on how they could access the video surveillance he had installed on the exterior of his home. Smith described how he assumed the intruders were targeting him personally. He decided it was either shoot or be shot. Smith says, I was so far over the edge and I was reacting. Soon, he heard a window break, followed by someone walking around upstairs. Not long after, the intruders descend into the dark, 
presumably empty basement. Smith saw feet, legs, hips, and then shot twice. The intruder fell down the staircase, face up, and Smith could make out it was a male. Smith told the police sergeant in his interview, I shot him in the face, I wanted him dead. Questioned about why he continued to shoot, Smith explained that he was afraid the intruders would get back on their feet and didn't want for them to pull out a gun. I wasn't looking at their hands, he explained. As far as I was concerned, they were totally dangerous. He tried to calm down, but blood was pounding in his ears as he heard more footsteps upstairs and feared that, quote, they're ganging up on me. He shot the next intruder in the same style of execution. Haley Kiefer tumbled down the stairs and let out a painful groan. My thinking was, I'm not going to ask if there's a gun, Smith says. He pulled the trigger to shoot her again, but when the gun clicked in a misfire, Kiefer allegedly laughed at him. He pulled out another gun and resumed shooting at Kiefer. Yes, I fired more shots than I needed to, Smith says. He claims he felt threatened and was no longer willing to live in fear. When Kiefer stopped moving, he dragged her by her clothes to the section of the basement where Brady had been sequestered. There, he noticed Kiefer was still gasping and struggling to breathe. He didn't believe she should, quote, suffer, so he gave her, quote, a good, clean, finishing shot to the head. She gave out that death twitch. It works the same as in a beaver or a deer, describing his previous experience with beaver and deer hunting. The slain teen's family in the spectator section of the courtroom whispered, Oh my God, after hearing the cold-blooded statement uttered from Smith's mouth. The audio recordings provided by Smith were named by jurors as the biggest influence on their verdict. Ironically, these recordings were by far the most damaging piece of incriminating evidence presented against Smith. Prosecutors played the disturbing recording of the shootings three times over the course of the trial. As the recording of the gunfire ran out in the silent courtroom, Smith sat at the defense table with his hands in his face, trembling in shame. Brady's groans are clearly audible on tape after being shot twice by Smith. Smith is then heard firing one more round and saying, you're dead, to the 17-year-old boy. You're dead. Smith shot Brady a total of three times, then wrapped his body in a plastic tarp. Smith then moved Brady to a different section of the basement to prevent him from bleeding on the carpet floor. About 10 to 20 minutes elapsed after the first shot, Smith sits in his chair as Kiefer's voice is heard on tape. She calls out, Nick? Nick. Twelve seconds pass, and Kiefer begins descending down the basement stairs. We then hear the first shot fired at Kiefer and then the concurrent sound of her body falling down the basement staircase. As Kiefer groans, Smith switches to his loaded revolver and shoots Kiefer again. Followed by a finishing blow to the skull from underneath her chin. Then one last patronizing statement is uttered from Smith's mouth. Bitch. After murdering Kiefer, Smith talks about how he did his civic duty and utters the phrase, like I give a damn who she is, confirming his premeditation and preparation after the sighting of the so-called neighbor girl driving by earlier that morning.
Smith's family had been working diligently since his arrest in November to come up with the required bail money to temporarily release Smith from prison. His original bail cost was set at a $1 million bond or a $100,000 cash payment. Despite major opposition from the prosecutors, the bail cost was reduced after Smith agreed to surrender his passport to prevent him from fleeing the country. The approved bail reduction brought total costs down to a $500,000 bond or a $50,000 cash payment. Smith met bail and was temporarily released from prison on Tuesday, December 18, 2012. Smith was initially charged with two counts of second-degree murder. However, in April 2013, he was later indicted on two counts of first-degree murder. Smith's trial began on April 21, 2014 and would last only a brief period of eight days. A doctor with the Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office testified that Smith fired a total of nine rounds using two different guns. Smith managed to shoot Haley Kiefer a total of six times and Nicholas Brady a total of three times. The prosecutor noted that the amount of time that passed between the sound of the window breaking to when Brady came down the basement stairs seven minutes elapsed in which Smith could have called the authorities. This particular statement caused Smith's older brother, Bruce Smith, to disrespectfully laugh out loud in the spectator area of the courthouse. Smith left the teen's body in the basement workroom until the following day. A neighbor named William Anderson contacted the sheriff's office 24 hours after the murders because Smith suspiciously called him asking if he knew a good attorney. On Tuesday, April 29, 2014, after roughly 3 hours and 20 minutes of deliberation, a pool of 140 jurors reached its verdict and found Byron David Smith guilty of two counts of first-degree murder and two counts of second-degree murder for the shootings and deaths of 18-year-old Haley Kiefer and 17-year-old Nick Brady. Smith was asked if he wanted to speak before his sentencing. Smith said, Thank you for the opportunity, Your Honor. I decline. The teen's mother cried as the verdicts were read out loud by the jury. Smith showed no emotion after being sentenced and was immediately taken into police custody after the jury's verdict of a mandatory term of life in prison without the possibility of parole raising questions about how far a homeowner can legally go to defend themselves and their property. The verdict sentencing brought the nationally watched trial to a close. Prosecutors contended from the beginning that Smith had crossed a legal line into cold-blooded murder when he continued to shoot Brady and Kiefer as they descended down Smith's basement stairs. Smith had become a symbol in the countrywide debate over the Castle Doctrine laws. Prosecutor Pete Orput said that Smith had a tarp ready in his basement to wrap the body of Nick Brady after he shot him at the top of the staircase. Legal analysts have stated that the initial shots fired would have been justified under Minnesota's Castle Doctrine laws but the subsequent shots were not permissible by law. The case sparked debate over the so-called Castle Doctrine, which allows a homeowner to defend their home with lethal force. The prosecution alleged that Smith's actions show clear signs of premeditation and excessive force in relation to the threat that presented itself. Sheriff Mikkel Wetzel of the Morrison County Sheriff's Department is quoted saying, the law doesn't permit you to execute someone once the threat is eliminated. Smith's defense attorney, Steve Meshbesher, said he would appeal the verdict and, if necessary, would escalate the case to the Supreme Court. He argued that Smith was fearful after his previous break-ins, and Meshbesher defended Smith, saying, Homes are where we live and feel safe. It's our castle in this country. Smith grew more and more afraid to live in his own home. He'd been carrying a gun at all times inside his own house. Meshbesher also said that Smith had written a memo to the sheriff's office regarding his October 27th burglary and other burglaries in the area. He told the police his story because he wanted their assistance and guidance. Meshbesher called Smith a concerned good citizen. Nicholas Brady and Haley Kiefer broke into Mr. Smith's home by shattering a bedroom window with a metal pipe. Mr. Smith did not seek Brady and Kiefer out. They sought him out by violently breaking into his home on Thanksgiving. According to Meshbesher, the judge also instructed the jury to not watch any news about the case to avoid outside influence. But the judge feared with significant media presence in the courtroom, the jury would still be swayed and become biased. As a result, the judge closed the courtroom on the fifth day of Smith's 11-day trial. In 2014, Smith's lawyers filed an appeal to the Minnesota Supreme Court to overturn Smith's conviction. After that, court documents show Meshbesher also filed the right of habeas corpus in May 2017. 
A right of habeas corpus, which literally means to produce the body, is a court order demanding that a public official, such as a warden, deliver an imprisoned individual to court and show a valid reasoning for the person's detention. We've been assigned a federal judge and a federal magistrate judge, and we're saying the federal constitution was not followed. When the state judge closed the courtroom doors, that is a violation of the federal law. It should be a violation of state law. There is a thing called freedom of the press, and you just can't close courtroom doors. Meshbezer told reporters that he wasn't allowed to show jurors all the sufficient evidence he felt was necessary to clear his client of first-degree murder charges. He hoped to be able to introduce evidence of Kiefer and Brady's previous run-in with the laws, including Brady's connection to previous burglaries in the community. Judge Douglas Anderson ruled that Smith had no idea who was shooting that day, so their histories or reputations weren't relevant to the case. Most of the audio recordings show Smith in a deranged and delusional light. There are clear signs of Smith's mental health declining as the burglaries continue to progress. Some bizarre and random statements heard on the audio tape include, I am not a bleeding heart liberal. I felt like I was cleaning up a mess. Not like food, not like vomit. Not even like diarrhea, the worst possible mess. And I was stuck with it. In some tiny little respect, I was doing my civic duty. If the law enforcement system couldn't handle it, I had to do it. The law system couldn't handle her and it fell into my lap and she dropped her problem in my lap. And she threw her own problem in my face. I had to clean it up. Meshbesher claims jurors had a very limited view of the case and will request a new trial on the argument that Smith did not receive a fair and public trial. Meshbesher says the right to a public trial is one of the most conspicuous features of American justice. It is incumbent upon the courts to jealously guard against any trespass upon such an important right. Meshbesher filed the brief for appeal in November 2018, saying the judge presiding over Smith's trial in 2014 violated Sixth Amendment right to a public trial when the judge closed the courtroom to all press and spectators. The judge ordered the courtroom to be closed over my objection, says Meshbesher. The judge's reasoning was backwards and it didn't make any sense. Meshbesher said the jury did not see all the evidence, an issue he would raise during the appeal process. Judge Douglas Anderson excluded evidence about the teen's history from the trial, including court documentation that showed Brady had previously broken into Smith's home and garage prior to the shooting. Judge Anderson felt that Brady and Kiefer's criminal history had no relevancy to the case since Smith didn't know the specific individuals targeting him. Meshbesher has requested a 40-minute oral argument to plead Smith's case to be granted a new trial. We're asking the Federal Circuit to straighten out what the state of Minnesota made a mistake on, Meshbesher said. And what the Federal Circuit can do is have the authority to reverse the conviction and go to a new trial. And if necessary, we'll take it to the Federal Supreme Court. There is currently an online coalition supporting the innocence and release of Byron Smith. A link to the website is available in the description box of this video. Please keep in mind these references are for investigative purposes only and don't necessarily reflect the views or opinions of this channel. There is also a full-length horror film titled Don't Breathe released in 2016 that has a synopsis similar to Smith's break-in story. A link to rent or purchase the film will be available in the description box of this video. In no way is this video sponsored or affiliated, I just enjoyed the movie and recommend watching it if you haven't seen it already. The family of both victims agreed amongst themselves not to speak out before or during the trial, not wanting to do anything to endanger or sway the verdict. Now that the verdict was in, they said, they felt free to talk about the kids they had loved and lost. We lost an amazing young lady, said Kiefer's aunt, Lori Skipper. She was a beautiful girl and it was so senseless what happened, and we we're going to forever miss her and there's nothing we can do to get her back. Nick Brady's grandmother, Bonnie Schaffel, shared her testimony of Nick's impact on her life. If someone was getting picked on, Nick was there to help the underdog. He was growing up and he was a kid and we love him. It's just a huge, huge loss. All appeals submitted by Smith's attorney have yet to be escalated to the federal court system. Smith has been incarcerated at the Minnesota Correctional Facility in Oak Park Heights since April 29, 2014. At the time of filming this video, Haley Kiefer would have been 25 years old and Nick Brady would have been 24 years old.